when it's time now for perspective. In recent weeks, it sometimes seemed that we're covering space news as much as terrestrial news, with NASA's Mars rover now sending extraordinary images back from the surface of Mars, and with a Chinese rover set to land on the Red Planet in a few months' time, not to mention last week's rather explosive end to Elon Musk's Starship rocket landing. So what's behind the latest international space race, and where do European ambitions fit in? My guest today is Jean-Yves Legard, director of the CNES, France's National Centre for Space Studies. He's also co-chair of the Council of European of the European Space Agency, rather. Thank you so much for being with us on France 24 today. Good morning. Good morning. What, in your opinion, are the most exciting avenues of space exploration right now? I think that uh, what uh, we see today with the exploration of Mars is uh, absolutely terrific. Uh, because uh, Mars uh, seems to be uh, the ultimate goal. And the reason is very simple. Uh, people uh, went uh, to the moon 50 years ago, but uh, they discovered a uh, kind of uh, planet but uh, which is uh, totally dead. But on Mars, we know that uh, 3 billion uh, years ago, there was uh, an ocean, there was an atmosphere, and uh, Mars and the Earth was uh, globally the same 3 uh, billion years ago. And afterwards, we have an evolution on the Earth, we still have oceans, we still have an atmosphere, and Mars became a cold desert without ocean and without atmosphere. But the question is, uh, perhaps uh, three billion years ago, there were some, there was some kind of, uh, let us say, uh, beginning of life on Mars, and uh, we want to see if we can find some, uh, let us say, uh, traces of uh, this past life on Mars, and this is why there are so many missions going to Mars. And why are they going there now? What is it about this particular moment in space exploration that means Mars is the is the ticket everyone wants to get hold of? Because these are uh, definitely the progress of technology. Uh, 20, 50, uh, 30 years ago, it was uh, very, very difficult to go to Mars. Now, with the progress of technology, intelligent artific uh, artificial intelligence uh, on board of the spacecraft, it's much easier to go to Mars. And in addition, we can go to Mars just every 26 months. And this is why uh, last July uh, there were three launches of uh, probes to Mars, a Chinese a probe from the Emirates, uh, Emirates Mars mission, and of course uh, the US rover Perseverance with on board the French camera Supercam, and uh, we are very proud of this cooperation with the US. And what exactly would be an extraordinary find? What do you hope to find on Mars? The demonstration that in the past there was a kind of life on Mars, but of course we have no idea of what it is, because depending when you arrive on Mars, you can find a life in a very, very different status. And this is exactly what we are going to investigate with this rover, which is now on Mars in the bottom of the crater G0. Now, SpaceX uh, has, of course, uh, plans to start settling humans uh, on Mars uh, in not too long. Um, do you think that that's an achievable goal in our lifetimes? I think that uh, sending a human to Mars is uh, very, very difficult because uh, today uh, we have astronauts in the International Space Station. Uh, Tim Peake from UK spent uh, six months. Uh, Thomas Pesquet spent uh, six months and he will be back to the station next uh, April. And after six months, it's the limit of the time you can spend, uh, you can stay uh, in uh, weightless uh, conditions. And going to Mars, it's a mission which uh, should last uh, at least 2.5 years. So it's very, very difficult. And uh, it is why uh, we consider that uh, it is not possible to do it before, uh, let us say, uh, 15 years in front of us, or something like that. I know that there are some people in the US speaking about of a Mars mission, human Mars mission, in two or four years. But uh, frankly speaking, uh, they said the same 10 years ago, and we are still waiting. <laughs> So you say it could be possible, theoretically, in about 15 years' time. But should it be possible? Is it desirable to get to Mars? And why, if so? 
It's an ambition. Uh, I am not sure that uh, from a scientific point of view it will bring a lot because it will be uh, extremely uh, costly, extremely expensive, but it's an ambition and uh, you know that there are some billionaires uh, who think that uh, they would like to go to Mars, but in my opinion it's very, very difficult. Now, you've spoken uh, a bit recently about what you call the post-new space. Could you just explain what you mean by that? In fact, uh, 10 years ago, a lot of people uh, spoke about uh, new space. And uh, the idea was that uh, instead of uh, the agencies which are funded by the government, we will have a new generation of entrepreneurs investing uh, private money in space and developing a new space. And uh, 10 years after, we realized that uh, that's true that there are a number of entrepreneurs. But uh, what we see is that uh, most of them, they uh, develop uh, new new approaches, but with public money. And this is what I used to call the post-new space, because uh, in the past we had public money, and uh, this public money was used by uh, government agencies, and now we have a public money, but which is used by private companies. This is probably the difference and the evolution. And this is why uh, we see so many uh, new companies dealing with space everywhere in the world. And is that an evolution of the of this space space, if I can put it that way, that you welcome? Is that a positive? Yes, a positive it's very positive change? because more and more people are interested in space. More and more people work in space, and uh, in addition, they take uh, all the benefits of the new technologies, of the evolution of technologies, the miniaturization, and it is why uh, the uh, price tag to uh, start to develop a space activity is lower and lower, and it is why we have more and more satellites. So. From my point of view, it's a very positive evolution. Now, there are also uh, a lot of planned missions to the moon in the coming years. As you said earlier, we uh, first set foot on the moon 50 years ago. Back then, it was really a, a matter of prestige, countries fighting against countries to get there first. What is the interest now in getting to the moon? I think that it is still an interest of prestige, but uh, the race to the moon 50 years ago was between the US and the USSR, and today it's between the US and China. But uh, uh, we still have this prestige, but uh, with a different approach, because the people in the US, they say that 50 years ago, they went to the moon just a couple of hours, and I am strong, stayed 22 hours or something like that. Now. They want to go back to the moon, to stay on the moon. It's roughly the same difference as the first flight of Yuri Gagarin in '61. He spent 90 minutes in space, and now we have astronauts in the space station staying six months. And it's the same approach. So 50 years ago, we just went to the moon, and now we want to stay on the moon. And this is exactly the plans which are under review. The mission is so-called Artemis, and I am sure that we will have people on the moon, uh, let us say, in 2026, 28, and probably with European people, because Europe will be a part of this new giant adventure. So there's the moon, there's Mars. Are there any other planets in our sights in the coming years? No, I don't think so, because uh, you have the other planets, uh, you have Mercury and Venus, but uh, which are uh, kind of hell, because the temperature is extreme. Beyond Mars, you have the gaseous planets, and you cannot land, because in fact, Jupiter, Saturn, it's a ball of gas, and uh, you cannot go. Perhaps some satellites of uh, Saturn as Titan, but it's very, very far, very long. So. It is why I think that uh, for the next, uh, let us say, uh, 10, 20 years, uh, it is clear, in my opinion, that uh, it will be uh, the moon for human people and Mars for uh, automatic missions. Mars does sound sufficiently ambitious for the time being. Uh, Jean-Yves Le Gare, director of the CNS, France's National Centre for Space Studies, thank you so much for speaking to us here on France 24 today. Thank you.